rose again, he made us fully justified and honored huh? with our creation. I don't know. It could be. His death, his resurrection, completed God's plan to bring us back to him. It'll, it'll play Sing it along with us as we lift up this great hymn on resurrection. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? And the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord, he's risen to death. Hallelujah. Sons of men and angels.
before we get started this morning, uh, last week, Cole mentioned something about a secret word or, or whatever. Okay? So here is what we're going to call it. Okay? It's going to be our secret sauce. Our secret sauce will be a word, a passage of scripture, or a phrase. Sometimes it may be up on the slide. Other times, you'll have to listen. Now that we've got that out of the way, Why are you here this morning? Are you trying to convince me? Dale, I, I, I don't mean to embarrass you, but you had all the emotion of Okay, uh, uh, all the emotion of, of when, when, when Sarah goes, would you take out the trays? Okay, I will. <laughs> Brother, you know I love you. <laughs> Is that why we're here? Seriously? I want to talk about an unstoppable love this morning. The soldiers, the crowds, the nails, even the grave could not stop him. Jesus overcame every one of them and was resurrected from the dead. As followers of Christ, we identify with his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the Apostle Paul, okay, in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 7, gives us a a, a great example of what that's all about. We're wrapping up the series called The Passion. And we've learned so far God's love for humanity. We, we've learned that, that, that loving others is tough business. Humility. Humility of the fact that Jesus left the glory of heaven. And was obedient to the will of the Father. Jesus' mission was the salvation of humanity. Yes, he healed and blessed and even raised the dead. But his mission was the cross. And today, we're here to celebrate what? His completed mission. Turn with me, if you will, to Luke chapter 24. Luke 24, verses, well, we'll go with. Five through uh, five through seven. In their fright, the women bowed down, and with their with their faces to the ground. But the men said, "What? Why do you look among? Uh, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you." What? While he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Why are you here? It's a great day, is it not? That's the good news. And we're celebrating that this morning. 
Okay, you're falling asleep on me already. Okay. He is risen! Oh, come on, people. Do you really believe that? I see, I see some heads on it. We'll do it one more time. Come on now. He is risen! Now I can hear you. Okay? The thing about here, I take my hearing aids out. I can't hear a thing. Mary, did you hear him back there? Okay. As, as long as she can hear you, that's fine. Now think back of the obstacles. There was Satan. There was the Pharisees. There were the Sadducees. There were the crowds. There were the soldiers. And yes, even you and me, if we were there. Even death tried to stop it. Didn't work, did it? Chances are, okay, as you sit here this morning, chances are that if you allow it, something would be there to try to stop you from following Jesus. Maybe it's something that's become a distraction. Maybe, maybe it's that, that pet sin. But, but regardless of what it is, distractions are normal. And the world is full of them. We need to keep our focus on the Savior. Not the church. Not the preacher. And you know something? Not even this. Why is that? Why is that? Am I going to be able to take this off of here? All right, I'm just going to lay it down. I, want, I don't want to break it. Why am I taking this down? What? He's not there. Why do we focus on the past? Yes, it's completed. Jesus said it's finished. Why do we dwell on it so much? I guarantee you, if you ever saw a cross that a man was crucified on, you would, you'd turn your head away in disgust. You couldn't. You could stub it. So why do we have these sanitized things? Why don't we have a real one here? If you want to put a cross up, put a real one up. Blood and all. That's what your Savior did for you. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 38-39. For I'm convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else, that all creation will be able to separate who? Us from the love of God, or from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Do you believe that this morning? That wasn't a rhetorical question. Do you believe it?
Cole, if I could impose on you, would you read Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 12 through 15 for us? We're going to talk about dying to sin. Okay? First, we must follow Christ and die to sin. So you're going to ask me, okay, preacher, what does that look like? Okay, here's an example. This is the only time I'm going to ask you and give you permission to do this. Take out your phone. Okay. How much power you got? Charged up? Now don't panic, okay? I'm not going to ask you to shut them down, even though that might be a good idea. Now imagine your phone completely flat. Dead. I know, it's scary. I know, I know. So what do you got to do to get power in there? What do you got to do? Got to plug it in, don't you? So if my phone is flat, I got no power, then I can't uh, engage in Instagram, Facebook, uh, and all those other apps that we have on our phone. Would you agree? In a similar way, we're called to what? To die to our sin. Unplug from the world and plug into who? Plug into our Savior. Oh, that sounds so simple. It sounds simple, doesn't it? So what if we were to plug into our into God's Word and prayer and meditation as much as we plug into other things. And I can hear you now. Well, that's easy for you, preacher. You don't wrestle with... Are you kidding me? Really? You don't think I don't wrestle with the same things you do? I got news for you. Okay? You're looking at a man... It's only here by God's grace. Pure and simple. The point is this. Jesus came to die for my sin. He came to die for my shortcomings. He came to die for my pride. Why, 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 why? And because he did, because he did. Throw the next slide up. I'm a new creature. Second Corinthians five seventeen. He says, I'm a new creature. Not a refurbished one. Not a rehab one. Okay. Not something that's been, you know, 
like like a baby's bottle, okay? You just scrub that thing inside and out, okay, okay, it's clean. No, I'm a new creature, a new spiritual being because of what he did on the cross. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says this, that I'm to present myself as what? A living sacrifice. And we do that daily, but what happens? Because we're alive, we keep crawling off. Okay, just, just on a, just like dig digress a moment, okay, and just a, a little thing, okay. Is it any wonder there was four horns on that thing? On the altar? Because I can't speak for you, I can speak for me, okay. You're going to need to tie me down sometime. Because I want to crawl off. I don't want that. And because of what Jesus has done, because he completed his mission, I'm to live for Christ. James 1 and verse 22 says this. Should be the next slide up there. Wow. Wow. Can I put that in the verbiage of the day? Okay. Don't talk a good game. Do it. It's easy to roll off the lips. And we, of all people, know how hard it is to live that in, day in and day out. But that's the expectation. But you say, preacher, I, I can't do that. You, you bet you can. But that's the challenge. We are to live for Jesus every single day. Every day moment of every single day. I don't care what you do, what your vocation is, okay, who your daddy is, what your mama do. I don't care. We are to live for our Lord Jesus 24-7. The Bible, okay, which, you know, the, I think it, it stands for uh, basic instruction before leaving earth. Something along those lines, okay. That, that's our guide. And you'll say, well, what about this and what about that? It's in there. It's in here. But it's going to require you. It's going to require you to study and pray. John 10.10 10 says, I think it's on the next slide up here. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come. Why? Somebody finish that for me. I have come to what? That they may have life, and that they may have have it what? More abundantly. I'm not talking about a new car in a garage. That's not the abundant life we're talking about. That may be a side blessing. That's not the abundant life he's talking about. The abundant life he's talking about is spiritual. God wants us to experience. That, that abundant life, spiritually, not, not with material things.
And I'm going to ask you to bear with me momentarily. So we're talking about the unstoppable love of our Savior. Some of you know a little about my testimony. But let me fill in some things for you. Yes, I was raised a preacher's kid. What you may or may not know. Okay, is that every abuse. Verbal. Physical. Sexual. I grew up with. Some preachers get up. And it wasn't me. It was the parent. So to survive, I had to be hard. Now most of you know I'm up here and I blubber and I cry and I can tell you why. Okay? Because of the redemptive things that happened in my heart. That's why. Now look, I know some of you guys, okay? I know, by vocation, okay, you can't do it. And I understand that. But I'm praying for you in a time when you can. Okay? Be the man that God's made you. And be able to come home and lay it all down and lay it aside. I became hard. To survive the home. Most of my childhood was raising my siblings. Some child or not. Then as I joined the Navy, got promoted. You guys that have been in the military, you know, okay, you got to be hard. You have to be hard. That's the nature of the beast. If you're not, okay, you're going to get ate up. Just pure and simple. Okay. So you develop a shell. And with my childhood at the military, okay. I had walls built up. I didn't even let my wife in so far. Nobody was getting to see. Nobody. But God did. God did. He didn't give up on Dan. And I'm thankful that he did. I stand here before you today by God's grace and only his grace. Of his completed work, of what he did. And, unless, and if I haven't told you lately, okay, it's a privilege, it's an honor to serve you. We've come to love you folks. I still remember around the table, okay? You guys, you know, bumped up the, the monthly thing or whatever, okay? And I started crying. Someday I'll let you know where we've been, okay? We've been in some hard places. Really hard places. So when God's people say, okay, you've done a good job, I'm not going to apologize for it. But this is, this is the love that God provides for each and every one of you. His love's unstoppable. It'll penetrate the hardest of hearts.
So in conclusion today, I'm going to ask you a couple of things. No, I, I'm not going to tell you a couple of things. I'm not going to ask you. Okay. Don't look at the cross. He's not there. Don't look at the tomb. He's not there. Where's he at? Where's he at? Go to the next slide up. Where's he at? He's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and me. That's where he's at. So when Dan blows it, and our accuser is there and says, hey, look what Dan's done. You know what Jesus says? He's covered. I died for him. He's covered in my blood. Go away. Now, am I still held responsible for those? Absolutely. Okay. Is there any condemnation there? Nope. I'm going to close with this. Not, not with that. If you've never entered into a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, I invite you to meet me down front. And I'll take God's word, okay, and show you what God's word says. Okay. Not what Dan says. Not what this church says. Not what the Southern Baptist Convention says. What, what does God's word say? Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be totally awesome to enter into that relationship with him this morning? Oh, and, and by the way, Christian friend, we often call today a time of new beginning. Wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome to renew your commitment to him this morning? Where are you at? Let's pray. Father, it's been good this morning. And yes, there was glitches here, there was glitches there. But you know something, Father? That's life. That's just distraction. Help us to focus on you and you alone. You're not in the tomb. You've ceased being on the cross. Your mission's complete and you're sitting there on the right hand of the Father. Help us to realize who you are. Help us to realize what you've done. Help us to go out these doors and share that with someone today. Lord, help us be true to you and you alone.
Jesus' name.